Hi YouTube, this is David Wong and this is a quick video to explain to you what is Tamarind Prover. So Tamarind Prover is a protocol verification tool. You can see they have a, a website here and you can, you can read more about it and they have an incredible manual and it's very easy to get into. Uh, for example, if you want to install it, you, on Mac you just have to write brew install Tamarind Prover and that's it. I, I believe on Linux or on Windows it's as easy. You have plugins for Veeam and, and Sublime Text with uh, Syntax Lightning and, and snippets and auto-completion and everything. Um, it's really a pleasure to get into. You, you'll see a bit more into this video. There's a nice web UI and everything. Uh, but first, let me tell you what it is. Uh, so, so Tamarind Prover is something that you can use to, to verify a protocol. So you have to transform your protocol into their, their sort of program, programming language and you can verify security properties so you also have to transform the security properties that you want to test inside of uh, this, this tamarind language if it works it gives you a symbolic proof uh, via this constraint solver at its core if it doesn't work it gives you a counter example and it's, it's basically uh, an attack so so in this video i'll show you a bit about uh, how new input looks like how I can prove some security properties on that input. And at the end, I'll give you a short demo where I try to, to myself cut, cut something and, and analyze a protocol, a very simple one, uh, and you can uh, try to understand the thing. In this video, I want to show you how practical Timer Improver actually is. I was very skeptical before I started uh, all this very uh, formal verification stuff. And I hope I can change your mind if you are if you are as skeptical as I was. And you can see that in a few lines of code and not so much time, you can actually analyze something. Now, of course, you can analyze more complex protocol. If you look on GitHub, there is a, or if you look at actual research and recent research, there is a lot of uh, TLS 1.3 analysis through Tamarind. They have a pretty big repository and it's kind of intimidating. And they actually have a page, a pretty cool page that explains everything uh, they did for modeling the protocol inside of Tamarind. So you can see on the left, you have the specification of TLS 1.3, like the real specification. Uh, well, it's still a draft, but uh, that's the specification. And on the right, you can see how they translated it into the, the, the language of Tamarind. Uh, this is a very long page, but it's very cool. And again, you can see that it's very complex because TLS 1.3 is a very complex protocol to begin with. All right, so let's start with the first example and I open this file into Sublime Text and you can see I have this beautiful color uh, syntax aligning. And we can see first that we have some structure in a file and I don't really know what protocol this is, but this is really just to show you how a file looks like. So uh, all, the, all the protocols translated into Tamarind will look approximately the same. You'll have this, this structure starting with theory and the name of your, your theory begin and then you will have an end at the very end of your file. After that you have some built-ins and those are here to make your life easier. So you have hashing for example that provides uh, a set of function functions for you to use. You have asymmetric encryption, same thing, it provides actually two functions, one to asymmetrically encrypt, one to asymmetrically decrypt. And you have uh, I think six other ones, uh, you have uh, symmetric encryption, defilement, uh, pairings and, and so on. So uh, yeah, don't worry too much about that, but basically if you have defilement in your protocol, you can use the built-in defilement and that, that gives you some shortcuts. Uh, you can have also equations and some functions. I'm not going to talk about that, but equations are, are your shortcuts. And basically uh, if you use hashing and all these things, they, they produce some equations. And functions are a way to create a one-way function. So you would do that by saying, I want a, a H1 function and I want it to take two arguments and to produce something that is completely one way. Uh, but yeah, after that you have a bunch of rules, a lot of rules here, and then you have lemmas. So very easy, the rules are basically your state transitions and the lemmas are the security properties that you want to prove. Okay, so when you'll want to, to have, uh, when you'll want to have Tamarind prove something to you, you'll have it prove a lemma or several lemmas. And to translate your protocol into Tamarind, you have to write the state transitions as rules. 
So here, very easy, you have a rule, the name of the rule, which is only, only for you, and you have the, the first state, so this is the existing state, also called the premise, and afterwards you can, if you have these states with these facts, or you can think about that as a structure with some variables inside, it means that you can transition into these states, which is the conclusion, okay, you have the premise and the conclusion, which is a combination of these two objects or structures or what we call facts in Tamarin, which always have an uppercase. And inside of facts, you have different kind of variables and I explain that later, but they have a type as well. And there are very few types. The tricky thing here when you translate your state transitions into Tamarin is that Tamarin only have one state. So you can think, for example, of TLS, where you have two peers, the client and the server, and you have actually two states, right? You have the state of the client and the state of the server. For example, here the client would have, um, for example, it receives the server hello here, and here it would do something with the server hello. Maybe send a client key exchange or something like that. In Tamarin, you only have one unique state. So you have to, to try to figure out how to translate that into a unique state. The image here you can use is that you have a fridge, for example, a fridge in your kitchen, and this is your state, you have only one fridge, right? And every time you want to create something out of the blue, uh, for example, to, to create a new state, you would post a post-it on your fridge. Then if you want to transition that state to a different state, you remove that post-it. So you remove the, this post-it here and you replace it with two post-its, those two post-its here, and you use this rule. And for example, afterwards, if you have those two objects in the, the premise of a different rule, you can replace them with whatever is in the conclusion of a different rule. So you, you remove those post-it and you place new post-it. I'll explain that a bit more later. Let's look at the lemma very quickly. And the lemma have name again to help you, but this is not used by, by Tamarin. And here what happens is that you have to write them using basic math. So if you read that, it reads exactly like math. For example, here you have for all of these variables such that this thing happens, and this is what we call an action fact, and you'll see after how to define those action facts, but basically this is an event. This event happens at a moment i, and this is temporal, this is why we have this, this bash sign in front of it, because everything happens at a certain time, right? We, we can order events in our protocol. So for all these things such that this event happens at time i, it implies that these two things are true. Actually, this thing is true or this thing is true. What is this thing? Well, it exists a moment a such that this event happens at time a, or it exists a moment, moment r such that these things happens at moment r and r uh, is before the moment i, okay? And this thing happens at a moment i. So like that you can, you can kind of order what is supposed to happen first or what is supposed to ha happen after something else. And it, it's basically all you have to think of right now. It's, it's, it's pretty easy to read if you're, if you're used to reading these, these math assumptions and it's pretty straightforward to write. The tricky part is that you have to really be careful when you translate a security property into a lemma. Sometimes you make a mistake and you actually do not translate that correctly and you think you proved that your protocol is secure, whereas you didn't really prove what you wanted to prove in the first place. All right, let's see how we can use Tamarin to prove uh, something like that on this uh, example protocol. And the very first thing to do is to type Tamarin Prover and we can use their web UI, which is really nice. You don't have to, but why not? Because it's super nice in the current folder. All right, gives me an error, uh, which doesn't matter because it's on a different file. I don't care about that file. Note that the files have this extension called SPTHY, which stands for Skeleton Protocol Theory. And here it gives me a URL and I can go to that URL and see what's up. So here I have the beautiful UI. I have all my files and the first example is here. And you can see here on the right, right away you have a bunch of shortcuts for the, the power users, which I am not, but it's nice to have. 
And here on the left, you have a bunch of things and the lemmas, right? So the security properties that we want to prove. So we don't have proofs yet, but by clicking on sorry, we can prove them. But first, let me go through all the, the, the links in here. So me message theory is basically all the messages, all the state transitions of the attacker. Because we have an adversary, we're in the Dolevio um, model, and we want to prove that our protocol is secure against this adversary. So this adversary can see anything going through the network, can tamper with things going through the network, can replay things, can send things instead of, instead of you, and can do pretty much uh, all of what you expect a, a network adversary uh, to be able to do. Uh, so the attacker here has its own set of rules, and you can see that for a lot of these rules, you'll have always this K. And I won't explain, but you have KU and even a KD, but this is out of the scope of this talk, uh, of, of this intro. So all the attacker's rules, and here you can see also that Tamarin rewrites a bunch of your rules. If you go here, uh, am I here? Yeah. And so sometimes when you write rules, you can have variants of these rules, uh, and Tamarin wants to, to understand all of that, and also how the attacker interacts with your rules. So this doesn't matter too much. And here, this is the interesting part. We can see that our rules are uh, written as diagrams. And you'll see that later when we look at proofs. But basically, when you see boxes like that, this is a state transition. And here you have the premise, the first state, the initial state. And here, the last line, you have the conclusion. So here, this state transition created these two states, these two facts out of this fact. And here you have what we call an action fact, and we'll see later that, that this is the thing we use to prove our lemma. When we say something happens, right? We use the action facts instead of the name of the rule. And we'll see why, but basically it's because you can use, uh, you can put variables into an action fact and like that you can kind of shape your what you want to prove. And, and later on, when we'll look at those diagrams, it's very, very, easy to understand them when you just look at the middle line because it basically describes what is happening. So what Tamarin does here is that for all of your state transitions, it looks at what is the premise and it tries to find the source of your premise, right? Because sometimes you might not have a source and it's kind of a useless rule because it will never happen. So for all the state transition, it kind of tries to find the source of this uh, state transition. And here you can see that everything happened fine. We have deconstruction complete. But sometimes you have uh, some problems. For example, you have some sort of an infinite loop and Tamarin cannot find the true source of a state transition. And when this happens, you're kind of in, a, in trouble and you will have something like partial deconstruction here. When this happens, I'm not gonna go into details, but just so that you know, you have to write some lemma called source lemmas that can help you prove that some, some premise have a source. All right. And then you will refine the sources. You will refine all your state transitions thanks to those lemmas and you will have a proof that they have a source. And this is what will you, you will use. You will use those refined sources. In this case, we have no changes because we had no problem. So we use exactly the raw sources, which are the refined sources here. But when you have problems, you fix them in the refined sources and then you use the refined sources. This is why the, the refined sources is here. But for this example, it doesn't matter. All right, let's go to the lemma and let's check, for example, this lemma and we want to prove it. We'll click on sorry and we'll have some sort of menu. And basically we can just uh, press A for auto proof. I click on auto proof. I have some green thing here and basically this green thing tells me that everything is fine. My lemma is correct, is true. And this thing gives me uh, some sort of symbolic proof to tell me that, that it's fine and it's true. If it's red, then uh, the problem is that uh, my lemma is not true and it will give me a counter example, uh, which will be an attack. But here we don't have this problem and we're fine. All right, let me delete this proof and just show you one more thing. 
here we can see that we have two methods actually we don't have to auto proof and this is one of the feature of tamarind we can actually guide our proof and here we can choose the method to to step into our proof here i will just choose to simplify my proof and then we step in inside our proof and here i have two other methods that i can use to continue proof i can use the method number two for example and it steps furthermore into the proof all right so what it what it says here what it gives you as options is actually a better way to solve the proof and a less good way to solve the proof according to some heuristics according to actually smart heuristic because tamarind has a bunch of heuristics that kind of sorts all those methods to 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 kind of find the best way to to prove your lemma and when you click on auto proof what it will do is actually always click on the first method so according to the smart heuristic the best method to prove your lemma all right let's see a demo now on how i would translate a protocol into tamarind the protocol i want to do today is a, an opportunistic defilement so think about defilement without any static public keys just ephemeral public keys this is if you know how defilement works it's a very trivially broken protocol you can just mine in the middle of it and we'll see how tamarind uh, kind of uh, finds out how it is breakable so let's just start with this um, this plugin that i have in uh, in sublime text for tamarind so i can just set the syntax and I get some uh, cut completion, and it's very nice, so like that I don't have to, to write anything. And I'll call I'll call it uh, screencast, okay, or today's screencast. I'm I'm gonna use the built-in for defilement, of course. This is a defilement protocol. I'm not gonna care about functions or equation. And I'm gonna start by writing those rules, right? Those state transitions. So the first rule I'm gonna write is a rule to create the identities. Of, of both the, the client and the server, and actually for as many identities as uh, Tamarind wants to, right? I'm not gonna bound, uh, bound myself uh, there. So I create my rule, and my rule will basically take nothing. We start from, uh, we want Tamarind to be able to run that rule whenever uh, it wants, right? So you can call that rule as many times as you want since it starts from nothingness. And I want to create an identity, and I'll be very verbose uh, with my, my names and variables and etc. So again, a fact. So this structure has an uppercase all the time, and then I want to specify some variables in my structure. So I'll say that I want to be called uh, a client, or maybe I want to create a server. I'll just call it A. All right. I just this is the identity, and then I want my identity to have a private key, right, and a public key. Pop key, I'll just call it pop. And every time I create an identity, I also want to send it to the network. So I'll send uh, actually my public key to the network. And this is really how you model the network in Tamarind. Everything that is sent out to the network is visible to the adversary. So like that, the adversary can see, can learn my public key. And theoretically, I can have a rule here, uh, receiving a pop key, for example, that basically receive something from the network and do something with it all right blah, blah 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 so this is how you communicate with the network and here because i received something from the network the adversary could really send me something instead of uh, receiving some legit public key so this is all good but where does my public key come from my public key comes from my private key right and we can actually use this defilement thing that allows us to write something like generator to the power of private key, right? Stuff like that. And so we'll just say that my public key here is just the constant G. That's why I use single quotes raised to the power of my private key. And actually, we don't want to have to write it every time. So we're going to use uh, this uh, built in here, this shortcut that lets us uh, just write uh, pop key equals this private key once and like that we can use it as a shortcut in our state transition all right so here tamarind would look at this conclusion of the state transition and we'll find out every variable and we'll try to kind of backward search where they came from so here the public key comes from the private key and a constant g so we don't care about it what about the private key though 
So here the private key is randomly generated. So the way to do it in Tamarin when we want to generate uh, to randomly generate it from nowhere is to have this function in the premise of your of your state. And I know it's weird to have something in the premise when we said we want it uh, to be empty, but that's how uh, Tamarin works. And we create this private key variable out of this fresh function, right? We randomly generated it. And since it's a random uh, variable, we also can use the, the, the type for a random variable. All right. Now, when Tamarin looks at it, it knows where the private key came. It came from uh, a random generator. And it's a random variable. Now, where, where does the, the, the identity comes from? Well, we don't really care where it comes from. We just want to say it's, it can be a client, it can be a server, it can be Bob, it can be Alice, it can be anything. We don't care, it's, it's something public. So we'll use the dollar sign to say, uh, to tell Tamarin not to worry about it. All right, so when Tamarin will look for this, uh, this conclusion, it will see that the private key comes from here, the public key comes from the private key, and this comes from somewhere we don't care about. And here, since we generate we randomly generate that, uh, Tamarin will not try to find the source of this premise, right? This can be called as many times as Tamarin wants. This means that if Tamarins run this rule two times, we'll have two identities. We'll have the identities of the client, for example, client um, prev, client pub, and we can have the identity of the server, right? Server, server prev, server pub. Uh, so this would be your state if Tamarin decides to run this rule twice. Once for a client, once for a server. Or once for bug, for example, it doesn't matter, right? And we can have multiple times the same fact because this is what we call a multi-set. It's not a, a set where everything is unique, but a multi-set where things can repeat uh, themselves. And actually, Tamarin can run this rule as many times as it wants to create, for example, two clients, three servers. It doesn't matter, right? Tamarin can do as many, as many things that it wants, uh, as long as it gives us symbolic proofs that that are true for any kind of, of run, and we'll go, we'll call that traces. Okay, so we we have this rule to create identities. Now, what should we create? Well. A protocol usually starts with a client sending a message to a server, right? And we'll call that a client hello. And a client hello is basically the client communicating to a server. And so what we want is to have two identities. We want to have the identity of the client and the identity of the server. So here we'll call it client, client prev key, client public key, okay? And here we'll call it server, uh, server prev key, and server public key. And we want to, to, to be sure that this is random uh, to help Tamarin. So we write it down again and, and those are public variables. So we write it down again. And here I could write uh, G to the private, private key, but uh, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to skip it. And from these two identities, I want the client to send something to the network. I want the client to send the public, its public key to the, to the server, right? So how do we do that? We create a tuple which will be our message and we'll call that, we're going to call that the client hello message from the client to the server and we send what we send the client public key and this is all we have to do except one thing except here tamarin if tamarin calls this rule it will erase these identities to create this fact here right because this is our initial state the premise and this is the conclusion. And since the conclusion doesn't have these two rules, they will be erased. And this is bad because we don't want our client and our server to disappear, right? So we have to write them down here again. Actually, we don't have to do that. That's, that's a bit tiring. We just have to tell them, to tell Tamarin that these are persistent facts. And we actually have to create it at the creation level as well. And a persistent fact, as opposed to a linear effect, always stays even if you don't write it in the conclusion. And uh, this is actually very good. This is what we want because we want them to be here for a long period of time. And because they're here for a long period of time, 
we don't have to worry about them another thing that I, I didn't tell you about but I kind of want to tell you so I'll, I'll tell you now is that remember I said that Tamarin can call this rule here to create identities as many times as it wants and that means that it can create uh, we can have states with several identities which are created for the client one for the client one for the server for example but it can also call it several times the same client and this can be a problem depending on your protocol and there are ways to to, to kind of uh, restrict your protocol to not do this kind of thing and you actually use restrictions but i'm not going to to talk to you about that here uh, one thing i want to tell you though is that if you if tamarin calls that rule twice with the same client with the same identity it will still have two different private key and this means two different public key right and this is because when we look at the origin of the private key it is randomly generated so this is an insurance that it cannot be the same uh, for two different identities. All right, doesn't matter much, but I just wanted to tell you about that. So here we have this rule uh, between two identities, you can have the client send this client hello containing its client public key. All right, so now we have to uh, create a rule for the server receiving that message. Okay, we'll say uh, receive client hello and maybe send even the, the server hello after that, all right? And this rule will have, we need a server for it to work and we need to receive this message. How do we receive message? I told you we get them from the network with that in function. So we receive a client hello from a client to the server, which is uh, here in this identity that we have in the States. And we receive this client public key. And here I'm going to remove this dollar sign because I don't want to restrict an adversary when the adversary sends me this, this message. I want it to be to my server here, so I keep the dollar sign, but I, I want it to be from any kind of client. Okay, the adversary can modify this message as much as it wants. And it's kind of true in, in real life when you receive a message from a client, you don't really know exactly who the client is. You don't have this identity. What do I do with it? Well, I could uh, create a session with it and I could also send a new message, send a message which is a server hello uh, from myself, the server, to the client and I send the server public key. All right, makes sense. And the session, how do you create a session? Well, basically uh, it's a session from the server between the server and the client and how do you compute the session key again? Well, you take the client public key that you receive and you raise it to the power of your server private key. All right, makes sense? This is basic defilement. So with this rule, we have one identity, the server, and we receive the client hello, and we can create a session between the server and the client with this session key. And we also send this server hello to the client. That should work. And now a last rule, our very last rule is the client receiving the server hell, right? Receive server hell. I'm being verbose with the rule names, but this is really, it only matters for us. This is just for us, it's not for Tamarin. So what do we get? And actually, I can just use these, these snippets that, that does everything for me. Uh, we get from a client, here I have the identity of the client. Whoop, 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 whoop. And what do we get? We receive a message containing these things. Uh, oh, and uh, here I didn't, I didn't close it. So we receive the message from the network, uh, from a server. We don't really know what kind of server it is, right? Could be an adversarial server from our clients that we have in the identity. And we receive a server public key. And same thing here, we can create a session between the client, the server that we received and um, our the, the server public key that we received rest to the, our to our private key client private key. and here we don't need to send a message right we we finished our protocol we're done oops and let's remove these things we don't need it so here we created all of the rules all right now that we've translated our protocol into tamarin's language 
uh, we translate those, those state transitions into those rules, we can start and translate the lemmas, so the, the security properties into lemmas. Uh, just before, I think I forgot this rule, we'll call it receive uh, server hello. Okay, so usually when you when you want to make sure that you, what you wrote is correct, you would use this lemma called uh, exists trace. And this will tell Tamarin not to, to verify the lemma is true for any trace, any instance of the protocol, but just for one instance of the protocol. You just want to make sure that uh, something is true just for at least one instance. I know my protocol work. I kind of cheated. I verified it. So I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use all traces. And actually, I can just ignore it because by default, it just writes all traces. And this will just verify that my lemma is true for any kind of run of the protocol. So the lemma I will try to, to find out, to, to create is man in the middle. I want to check if an adversary can man in the middle that protocol. And I will start by, start by saying in math, for all um, clients and server and session key such that, uh, such that what? Such that, for example, a client creates a session between the client, the server with the session key and a server creates a session between the server, the same client and the same session key. And I haven't defined yet what is client create session and server create session, but those are events. And I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how I define it later. If this is true for any client, server and session key, then I want this to be true also. The adversary never learns the session key. Okay, I, I haven't wrote everything, but this is a high level uh, lemma that I want Tamarin to prove. Here I'm missing something, I'm missing temporals. All of these events, all of these things happen at a certain time and temporals have this bash sign in front. So I want to say that this thing happens at time i, these things happen at times j, and actually I want to order them. I don't have to, but I just want to make sure. I want to say that this thing happens before this thing, right? If you look at your state transitions, you know that the server creates the session before the client creates it, right? So this thing happens before this thing. And actually, another thing, but we want to make sure that the client is not equal to the server, right? Otherwise, it doesn't really make sense. We don't want the client to send uh, the, that client hello to, to himself. And here, to, to, to imply that the adversary never learns the decision key, we're going to say that the adversary actually learns the decision key, and we're going to say that it's not true. So how do we write that? We say, it doesn't exist at time k such that the adversary learns the session key at time k. And the adversary learns something, we use this, this fact called k, as we've seen previously. Another thing here, um, if you're used to writing these kind of proofs, you know what I'm missing. If you're not used to, you might not see what I'm missing. What I'm missing is that do session key between the client and the server might not be the same. Right? We have actually two session key because they might negotiate different session keys. And if we don't have that, we're not going to find the man in the middle. So here there is a moment K1 and a moment K2 where the adversary learns the second session key. It's important because uh, the client and the server don't really know if they, they negotiated the same key. They know they're talking to each other. The client is talking to the server and the server is talking to the client, but they don't know if they negotiated the same key. As long as the protocol works, then it might be mine in the middle. I'm verifying everything. So this is for, for any client creating a session with the server and the server creating a session with the client. Okay. Any of these events such that the server creates it first and the client is not the server, then this is true which mean that the adversary never learns the session key one and never learns the session key two together. All right, I'm gonna save that file and I'm, I'm gonna see if I did any mistakes. So I run Tamarin. Ah, I did a mistake, okay. Lemma man in the middle references action, but no rule as, okay. I forgot something. 
I forgot to define client create station and server create station. So how do I define that? I actually define it in, in between the state transition. So here we see that the server creates a session, right? So I'll define that as server create session between uh, our server, the client which who sent us this client hello, and this session key we have. And here I'll do the same. I'll do uh, client create session between the client, the server, and this session key we have. And here it's important that we write our lemma with this event that we also call action facts, which are not facts, neither the name of the rules, because here, since we, we can give them variables, we can kind of play with what variable we want to use to shape our lemma, to make it more understandable, understandable and to make it more uh, clear. So, so really, again, we don't use the name of the rules or the facts. We use those action facts that we can kind of model as, as a, we, we can kind of, kind of make them as flexible as we want to with those variables so that we can use them in the lemma, in the proof. Okay, that should work. I'm running it again. I still have an error. Free K2. It doesn't understand K2. Yeah, I didn't define it exists the temporal k2 such that k1 and k2 exist all right no errors so that's good so let's go to our browser refresh the page uh, we have my my screencast here deconstructions complete everything went well i'm gonna try to prove this lemma or to prove and it should be read all right it is read tamarind found an attack Beautiful. We have a diagram of the attack. Um, so Tamarine doesn't always find the nicest attack, and so you have to, to figure out how it works. But basically, you can look at the middle. Uh, in, in the middle of all the state transition, there is this, this either the name of the rule, or if there is an action fact, the action fact is in there, here. And you can see that an identity is created here. An identity is created here. See here the, the client identity is created. Here the server identity is created. And we can see that here, for example, the, the client sends a client hello to the server, to another server. So it's not a, a beautiful trace, but this is what it is. And here this thing goes to the adversary. Every round thing is the adversary. So here the adversary sends something to that state via the in function. And here the adversary retrieves something from that state transition via the out function, right? So this model, the networks. And this is red because this is where we learn the session key. And we can see here that the adversary sends something, the server hello to the clients, and the client learns what? Learns the public key, which is a fat public key, which is actually G. So the server, the fake server sent a public key G. And what will be the session key of the client in that fake server? It will be G raised to the, uh, the client's uh, private key. Right here, we create the session with the G to raise the client private key. And we know this, right? This is the client's public key. And we know this here when the client sent a client hello also, we learned it for this uh, client private, G raised to the client private key. And then I think the server sends its public key during a client hello, and this is because uh, we don't have the most beautiful trace, uh, but by changing a bit how we wrote the rules and the lemmas, we might obtain better traces, but in the end, it doesn't matter. If we spend some time looking at this diagram, we understand the attack, and this is all that matters. The end matters, the attack matters. And that's it, that's about it, right? So, so the, the point is that you have to understand how to create those rules, how to write those lemmas, and how to understand when an attack has been found. And if an attack hasn't been found, uh, make sure that everything was written correctly. Again, uh, I'm not a professional. This is how I do things. This might not be the nicest way of doing things, but in the end it works. It found an attack, not the nicest attack, but I can understand the attack and a better 
someone who's more accustomed to, to tamarind might write better rules, write better lemmas, and it might give you better traces. All right, if you have any question, I encourage you to, to write something in the comments. If I said something wrong, same thing, and I'll try to correct it uh, later. And I hope you enjoyed the video.